Who doesn't love a good frog blow up? Gotta love a frog. If you're like me, one of my all time favorite techniques is fishing a frog. No matter if I'm fishing in a pond or a lake or a river, a frog is just a great way to catch a lot of big bass. But a frog can be actually a very frustrating lure at times. And today I actually wanna give you seven different frog hacks that will help you to catch more fish on a frog. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. This video is brought to you by sportsmansoutfitters.com. Right now at Sportsman's Outfitters, if you buy one Arc Lancer Pro Series rod, you can actually get the second for just $19. That's right, if you buy one, you get the second for just $19, it's really an extraordinary deal especially if you're on the market for some rods and not only that for Memorial Day for about the next eight days they are running a ton of different sales and deals that you can save a lot of money on your favorite lures so if you want to help support the Bass Fishing HQ channel and save some money yourself click those links down below in the description and shop at Sportsman's Outfitters today no matter where I go from New York to Florida Alabama I have caught a ton of fish on a frog and today I'm going to give you seven hacks that will actually help your frogs to last longer. It will help with your hookup ratio and it will simply help you to catch more fish on frogs. So let's dive into those right now. Now the first hack is all about making your frogs last longer. And if your frogs last longer, then you're going to catch more fish on them. So this trick, this hack is pretty much guaranteed to help you to catch more fish on the frog. For years, when I used to fish a frog, I would fish a frog all day, I would cut it off, I'd throw it in my box, and then maybe a week later when I went out fishing again, I'd pull that frog out and I would have Mr. Kinky Legs. If you guys have seen this before, you know that this is one of the biggest issues when it comes to fishing a frog, is sometimes you pull them out and the legs are all stuck to each other, they're kind of bent at a weird angle, and it pretty much ruins that frog. Now there's a really simple trick that I actually learned from Kyle Welcher's YouTube channel years ago that can help you to keep your frog legs nice. All you have to do for this one is add some baby powder to your frog box. That baby powder kind of helps soak up some of that water so when you put that frog back in that box it really helps to keep those legs pristine just like you took it right out of the package. Now your frog box is going to look a little funny covered in baby powder but literally as soon as you start casting that frog out that baby powder comes off and that frog is fresh and it's ready to go. Now the second hack can really help improve your hookup ratio with a frog. One of my all-time favorite frogs, the one that I probably fish most of the time is a Spro popping frog. I've caught more fish on this frog than any other frog. I like that it's a little bit more slender. That really helps my hookup ratio in general, but the plastic of this frog is actually a little bit hard when you first take it out of the package. And what I mean by hard is it's a little bit hard to actually collapse this frog to expose the hook. So sometimes that can actually impact your hookup with fish and it can cause you to lose a few fish. So the best thing that you can do is actually make the these frogs a little bit softer. And the best way to do that is simply by boiling your frog. Boiling that frog will actually kind of break down the fibers of that plastic and that will permanently make that frog a little bit softer. So just a little test for you. I have two brand new popping frogs. This actually happens to be one of my favorite colors, which if you wanna know is called natural red. I'm gonna boil one of these. I'm not gonna boil the other one so you can kinda of see the difference between the two at the end. Don't boil your frogs with the same pot that you use to boil your food. I just don't think that's a good idea. All right, the water is now boiling. I'm gonna throw that guy in there. I'm gonna set my timer for one minute. I'm just gonna let him do his thing. All righty. Now here are our two frogs. They are now the exact same temperature. I let them sit out. This one right here, we didn't boil, and this one we did boil. Now I can just tell you that this one is substantially easier to collapse, but I kind of wanted to show you. So if I take the one that we didn't boil and I take this two ounce weight right here and I set it on there, um, as you can see, it really doesn't collapse hardly at all. I mean, it, it pretty much is still flat across the top. 
And two ounces isn't a lot of weight, especially for a bass, but I just wanted to show you the difference here. Now, if I take this two ounce weight off of this one, here's the, the frog that we boiled. And if I set it on there, you can see right away how it divoted. It actually went down. So it just goes to show you that this does soften up the plastic. It does make it easier to collapse. I know that that seems a little bit extreme, but if you are having problems hooking up with fish or losing fish, this can really help solve that problem. Now, with that being said, I have actually fished on lakes before where I will literally see bass come up and grab the tails of a frog and actually go off with just the tails in its mouth. It's happened to me a lot growing up in Ohio because I fish for a lot of those pound and a half to two pound fish. This actually brings me to my third hack when it comes to frog fishing and that is simply add a frog trailer hook. If you guys haven't heard of this frog trailer hook before it's actually a really good one. It's made by Lake Fork Tackle. It's called the frog tail hook. It's really simple to use. All you do is take this thing out of the package. You put it on the two hooks of your frog and adding this trailer hook can really help increase those bites, especially if you're running into that problem where those bass are coming up and they're biting the tails of the frog. This is a really simple hack. You don't always need to do it, but there are times where having this trailer hook is going to mean the difference between you catching that fish and getting a lot of cool blow ups. Now, speaking of hooking up with fish on frogs, the fourth hack is a little bit more of a tip, and that is do not set the hook right away when a fish hits your bait. Probably the biggest mistake that I see a lot of anglers make with a frog is that they automatically set the hook as soon as that fish blows up on that bait. I remember years and years ago, I was fishing on Lake St. Clair for largemouth with frogs, and I was missing a lot of frogs because I was setting the hook too soon. And that lake is really, really clear. And I actually remember seeing a fish come up, he hit the frog, and he just grabbed one of the tails like this, and he started swimming down. And as he was swimming down, he engulfed the rest of the frog. And then I set the hook and I caught that fish. But I remember visually seeing that and realizing that I was setting the hook way too soon. And sometimes a bass actually needs to get this bait a little bit better before you can set the hook. So when that fish comes up there and he hits that bait, just count in your head to two Mississippi, you know, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, set the hook. I actually did an experiment last year where I wanted to see just how long a fish would hold on to a frog. And I'll show that to you real quick. Clear Mississippi, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. Fish has still got a five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi. I'm just gonna set on them. So as you can see, a bass will hold on to a frog just like they will a soft plastic or a jig. So give it a few seconds before you set the hook. Now the fifth hack will actually help you to catch more bass when you're fishing around matted vegetation. Whether this is maybe really thick scum mats on a pond or matted milfoil, no matter what it may be, this will help you to catch more fish around matted vegetation. And that is simply adding weights and beads to your frog. Now I've actually shared this on the channel before, but you can actually place a weight and or a bead inside of your frog. And this will help you when you're fishing around a mat because adding a little weight to that frog, as you are pulling it across the mat, it will actually help to kind of sink that frog a little bit lower, which almost creates a little bit of a V wake on top of that mat. And this really helps the bass to kind of hone in on the frog. Now, when you are adding weight to a frog, the big thing you want to know is that this frog is going to be probably designated for only matted vegetation. Because if you add an eighth ounce or even a quarter ounce of weight to a frog and you are fishing it in open water situations, that frog may start sinking on you. So just know that when you add weight to a frog, this frog has now become a matted vegetation only frog. Now, the other thing that you can do is add a bead inside of your frog. And the bead is just going to add a little bit extra sound again helping that bass to hone in on that frog when it is underneath of a mat now hack number six is something that i like to do when i'm fishing a frog kind of in more open water if i'm fishing it underneath docks or if i'm fishing it under overhanging trees where a bass can really visually see that frog this is what i like to do with my frogs and that is basically add a target 
to your frog. I like to take a red Sharpie marker and I will literally just add a small dot to the bottom of my frog. Typically, I place this dot kind of on the throat of the frog because I want that bass to kind of see that red target right before it goes up to hit that bait. Now I know that this may not sound substantial but this is very similar to adding a red treble hook to your front crankbait. It kind of just gives the bass something to target when they are approaching that frog and if you know anything about the way that a bass sees, a bass can see red and green the best. That, those are the two colors that it can see the best. So adding that little red mark to the underside of a frog, I think as a bass is coming up to it and they see that little red dot last second, that is what they aim for and that is what they bite. And I think it really helps you to increase your hookups with the frog because they get that bait just a little bit better. Now, just like any of these hacks, this isn't always necessary to do, but it's something that gives me a little bit more confidence and I think it helps me to catch a few more bass that may have missed the frog otherwise. Now, the seventh and final hack is probably one of the most important ones and that is actually knowing when to put the frog down. I have seen days out there on the water that no matter what you do to a frog, you will have fish almost boil underneath the frog or it just seems like they slap at it with their tail. And during those days, you have to put the frog down and probably the best bait to pick up instead of a frog is a popper. Now, the great thing about a popper is that you can work it back and forth just like you can a frog. But another thing about a popper is when you sit it in the water, a lot of times the popper sits like this in the water. This bottom treble hook will actually sit down a couple inches below the surface. And that really doesn't seem like a lot, but that makes a huge difference on actually hooking up with fish is having that bait sit below the water. Those fish will come up, they'll grab that bottom treble and you got them. Now, if you are like a lot of guys, you may have stopped fishing a popper a long time ago. And I actually made a video all about how to fish a popper, what to do with a popper, some tricks you can do to catch more fish. And I'm gonna link that right here. So if you guys wanna learn more about popper fishing, click on that right now. Also, don't forget to check out those deals at Sportsman's Outfitters and I'll see you guys in the next video.